Forest Attract is open since November 1988 and it provides residential respite and day services for 62 adults with an intellectual disability. And now she tracks so there's all sick people there and uh, well, there was 10 in our bungalow was too noisy. Traditionally people would have lived in, in a bungalow type setting on campus but it, you know they may have been living with nine others up to a max of 10 people. Their day on site was very routine. They would have had their meals in a canteen and they would have used all the facilities on site. So really there was no need to go outside of Oris Attracted. We've learned very dearly as a state that institutional settings can be quite detrimental to people. We need to make sure that the state enables its citizens to live life um, to their full potential. I didn't like Oris Attracted because there was too long in it. I was in it since the, the late 1980s. Mayo Community Living, as we are now known, is an entirely new service. The change process itself began in summer 2016 um, and that started with a transition team starting on site. This was new beginnings for everyone, including the transition team themselves. They built up what we now describe as a, a personal profile in each resident in terms of discovering who they wanted to live with, where they wanted to live, and from that they developed a transition plan in conjunction with the staff team in each house the work that we're doing um, in terms of supporting people to move to the communities. This isn't about money and it isn't about cost saving. This is about doing things right for people with disabilities and supporting them to have a life um, that is meaningful and of their choice. We have a number of residents that have complex health needs on site and naturally enough I suppose it is a concern for, for their families. And I do feel for families because families will be worried about their loved ones, they'll be worried about well, what happens into the future. We've had to do quite a bit in terms of making sure that they have assurance or a guarantee that the state will continue to provide supports and services whilst it's trying to realise this important initiative around living ordinary lives in ordinary places and not in institutional settings. I suppose there was very much of a fear of the unknown for staff as well and staff themselves you know, needed a lot of reassurance and a lot of education around where, where, where this is going to be and what it's going to mean for them moving forward. There's a level of um, responsibility and exposure I suppose that comes with that and that you maybe you don't have the interaction with as many of your colleagues as you used to do. So that's something that we just need to be mindful in terms of how we support staff. The supported self-directed living training has had a significant impact. Staff who have done the training in, in SSDL are very good in supporting people and, and in discovering I suppose their talents and what they want to do in their lives. Sometimes you walk in the door, you don't even recognise somebody. Physically, you don't recognise them and how they might greet you. And it's absolutely transformational. I just noticed Mark in Oris Attractive and I knew he was young, a young fellow. So I, I used to think, God, he, you know, he walks with his head down. And then when I met him here, even in a couple of months, you could see a big change. I can see he walks now with his head held high. I do, yeah. That's only a habit that I have. <laughs> You're walking confidently now. Yeah. Going from living in a place where they maybe didn't get to um, decide what time they got up, or what time they went to bed, whether they had, they had a shower or a bath, what they watched on the telly, to having all of those choices and more, all the things that we take for granted. That can be a scary space to be in and, and they will look to staff um, or look to family to say, well, what should I choose? And actually, it is about supporting that self-direction and enabling them and encouraging them to actually start making decisions for themselves. Sheila had her first big holiday in Berlin just a few months ago and she loves telling everyone about that. I love Berlin when I seen David as well and Kit. We came back on a big plane. There was loads of people on the plane from Germany. It's our first time on a plane. Yeah. Oh. I do it again. I I I I I be uh, uh, eventually I might be getting used to the plane now. And you were talking about maybe getting a job working with animals? Yeah, and getting the job with the Irish PCA, looking at the dogs and cats. It's a good change out in the community. I wouldn't want to go back to Swinford again. I love my new house. I rang my sister this morning. Don't want to talk to them and see yeah. my, uh, like my new house. In Oris to the site, there was a cleaner that used to come in and do the washing where now Celia on her washing every morning. It's really taking part in her daily routine and daily household duties and things like that. So 
and that's kind of a big change. Bernie, she's really availing of everything in the community. She's a very, very outgoing, bubbly personality and she loves to meet new people. Did you tell them about your job down? My job downtown went to down prison Paul. Yeah, what do you do down there? Iron the clothes. And you do arrange them on the hangers. Uh, and, go, go, go world. and you're going to Slimming World once a week downtown mm -hmm. here, yeah. People watch out for each other in the community. You get to make friends with ordinary people and do ordinary things. The most thing has, that has surprised me is how quick the actual adjustment has come. You know, I envisaged it to be much more difficult, but it hasn't, to be honest, because it's new, it's exciting, and the people that have moved are very willing to grab opportunities and experience things. I just got to the stage where, where I had to move on and like all people do. Once I get into the routine, I'll be able to go downtown by myself and do more things, you know. Now, both of the lads are going to and scroll to the gym. They're, they're going to the cinema, the pub, coffee, uptown, and it's all about what they want to do. They're getting out the meals in the canteen yeah. in order to track the just like Celia has said, there was a canteen, so didn't really see much prep going on, didn't get the smell of just a home cook, like a roast chicken dinner on a Sunday. Even just the sensory, even the smell of cooking in a, ho in a house is really mm. homely and it just creates a lovely environment and getting involved more as well. I'm at Pihina Sars. I didn't like to attract the talk. When we moved it in Christmas time, we got excited. And we had our first Christmas dinner and everything. We, we got hard alright and now it's alright. We always alright now.